Hi everyone, I'm Katie from the Museum of Ontario Archaeology um, here with our tour of the Virtual Reality Longhouse. Um, the Virtual Reality Longhouse is part of our exhibits at the museum, so when we are eventually open again you will be able to come and uh, test this out for yourself if you haven't already done so. Um, I've I went last week and I walked through the longhouse and I recorded that walkthrough, which is what I'm going to sort of narrate us through. Um, however, I did find that it's quite choppy. Um, so I'm going to talk and pause as we go um, so that uh, it doesn't um, make, us all, make us all nauseous. Um, so this here is a, a good view of that sort of central area of the longhouse and the longhouse or a longhouse in general, um, they are not all exactly the same, but they have um, mostly these things in common. And that is that they have a long center line, which had fire pits. Um, this particular longhouse has three of them. You can see two of them in the picture here. There is a third one behind me. I'm sort of standing in the middle of the longhouse. And on either side, there are sort of these two platform constructions and they are made out of posts, vertical posts that sink into the ground. Um, last Monday we talked about the post molds and so if these were real when they rotted away they would leave uh, differently composed soils underneath the ground which would have a different color than all of this um, packed earth that makes up the floor of the longhouse. And so we'd be able to see all of these little posts represented in the ground, as well as these fire pits. Um, and so what this longhouse does is it allows us to see what a longhouse like this one here would have looked like when people were living in it, or somewhat like that. Um, as well as it allows us to see it from the ground up, because archaeologically we only see from the ground down. Um, so as I was saying, um, these platforms, which with our sort of 21st century eyes, we tend to look at this construction and see a bunk bed, but that's not really what it is. So on the bottom, we have beds. So those that part is a bed, um, but the top part is for storage. So there's one on either side, and you can see that there are some squash sitting up here on top of this bunk. And I'll try and get us another view with some more storage up there um, later on. Um, but underneath our beds, we also have storage. So up on the top bunks, we're going to be storing things like squash, meats, leathers, and furs. Things that won't rot away. Or things that would rot away. Um, we're going to put things underneath that won't rot away. So things, if they get damaged, or they, if they get wet, they won't get damaged. Um, we also, in this particular longhouse, have this sort of extra space beyond the center part of the longhouse. And they don't all have that. Um, this particular example has uh, one on each end, and we'll take a closer look at that too. Um, the longhouse that's built at the MOA on the Lawson site has none. Um, so not all longhouses, as I mentioned earlier, are the same. Um, just like our houses today aren't all the same. Um, so they have different things that you see at different times. But this center line with fire pits and the two bunks on either side or the, the two platforms on either side um, are pretty universal. Um, longhouses like these were built in southwestern Ontario and southeastern Quebec, as well as on the southern portions of the Great Lakes as well. Um, they're not always associated with agriculture or farming. So sometimes there are people uh, who built longhouses who were not farming, but generally if people were farming in the, south, uh, the Great Lakes region, um, they also had longhouses. So you don't need to farm to have a longhouse, but generally, if people were farming, they built longhouses. And that's because the farming meant they had to stay in one place, and they could build these large, uh, non-movable, unmovable housing. Um, so I'm going to move our picture. I'm just going to give us a pause. Okay, 
So from this vantage point here, uh, you can kind of see the third, the third fire pit is down in the corner there. I was standing in this area before. Um, a few more of these things stored up on top. We have some pots up here and some baskets way up in the corner. Um, some more squash. And up at the top, we have all sorts of things hanging from these posts. Um, you also see this line of uh, what is supposed to be smoke um, that we see here in our longhouse. Um, and below it, we have the sort of the living area where we would do all of our everyday living. And this upper portion is where the smoke can collect. Um, because these fires, they're not, um, they're not fireplaces. They don't have chimneys, so they're not a controlled smoke. Um, they smoke billowing up off of the fire and eventually they make it to the roof and eventually they'll make it out of the longhouse. Um, and there are some holes at the top, um, that, which we'll see later, uh, that release that smoke out of the space, out of the building. But in the meantime, it gathers near the roof. And so in that smoky layer, all of these uh, foods, maize, meats, fish, fish, things like that, they are hanging to dry in that space. And by drying them, they will uh, last a lot longer. So they're preserving these by removing the water, the moisture from them, and the smoke helps with that. Um, I'm going to pause this one more time because I'm going to pop us up to that layer. All right, so we are high up now on top of the, the upper platform and see how high we are. Um, there's these foods hanging here. We're um, at an adult height standing in that smoke. Um, so it's a fairly, fairly probable that a, not a lot of activity went up on top of these platforms and they were used purely um, for storage. Um, but up here as well, we can see these sort of horizontal posts that are helping support the upper structure of the longhouse. And some of this nice tying that has been used to put it all together. And we'll see this all throughout the longhouse, that the, the posts, the horizontal and the vertical posts have been tied together. And these ties would be things like leather strips, uh, even bark, particularly birch bark could be used for this, um, as well as cord or string, which has been made from different plants that grow along um, outside. Along, uh, there's quite a few different options to make cord or string in the Medway Valley Creek area um, as well. So basically the longhouse was tied together um, or in places if, uh, if possible was sewn together using um, these materials. Okay, and um, here we are sort of standing in that outer area. You can see that there's lots of baskets and uh, sort of wooden uh, containers as well as pottery, and they're all filled with food. So this is sort of an extra area to um, store foods, to store resources. They, this section of the longhouse, um, when they're used, they're also breaking weather. So any winds, any snow, any rains will not get into that main center portion of the longhouse because they'll get blocked by this section. Sort of like um, a porch, a big overhanging porch would protect the inside during a rainstorm and that sort of thing. Um, so that's sort of their main purpose. And there's one on the other end of this longhouse as well, as you can see over there. Okay, and now I've brought us just outside the longhouse so we can see the outer walls. Now, the longhouse that is at the museum, built on the Lawson site, is built with a birch bark outer covering. And this one is different. This one is a, a thicker bark, probably um, what's supposed to look like an elm or an oak. Um, and the reason why they're different is because different materials would be used on different longhouses. 
Um, so the longhouse that the museum has with the birch bark is probably not what the longhouses would have looked like 500 years ago that were built there. Um, the museum, Southern Ontario, London, Ontario, is in what's known as the Carolinian forests. And this for or these types of forests, which run all the way down the east coast of the United States, they are not known for being plentiful of birch bark. Um, so they have elm, they have oak, they have maple in our parts, not necessarily the further south, but um, they, they don't have a lot of birch bark. And when they do, they tend to be fairly small trees. So further north, we find a much more plentiful resource of birch bark and birch trees. So the longhouses that were built uh, 500 years ago in the Barrie or the Midland area, north of Toronto, probably would have had birch bark on them. Um, our longhouse, or the longhouses that made up the village that's now on the Lawson site, uh, would probably not have. Um, so they would have looked more like this. And I've uh, stopped us here, sort of on the outside, stepped back a little bit, so you can see the shape of the longhouse. It is an oval top shape. It's an arch. Um, much, much narrower uh, at the ends than it is along the sides. So they're called longhouses because they were longer than they were wide. Um, and these longhouses, uh, archaeologically, when they find them, they're generally always about seven meters wide. So this point to this point here, pretty universally seven meters. Um, there's probably a reason for that, and that's probably because they can only build realistically so high this way, and they're fairly even with to height, probably. We don't know that for sure. Um, that type of information is known through traditional knowledge that has been passed down, um, as well as uh, a few sort of historical uh, descriptions of longhouses that have been uh, written down. Um, and the length of the longhouses, we're going to move so we can see the other, the other side of it for a second. All right, so here we are on sort of the outside. We can see that the longhouse is much longer than it, than it is wide. Um, the longhouses uh, can be up to about 110 meters long. The longhouse that's at the museum, um, I'm not sure of its exact length, it's somewhere in sort of the 40 meter range. Um, so they can be much longer and much bigger than the one that we've rebuilt. This one is probably a little longer than that, um, based on the number of fire pits that are running in the center. So our, our sort of fictional drawn animated longhouse here would probably be in the sort of 60 feet or 60 meter range. And I'm going to move us along so that we are on top of this longhouse. And here we are on top. Um, you can see the birch or the, the bark extends all the way up here and it flattens out and there are these holes and if this works we can see them oh. we can see them oh there we go so down through the hole all the way past the the foods that are being dried and the fire pits are way down there beneath us um, so this is uh, one of the things that you can do in this virtual reality longhouse that uh, we don't always tell people because uh, it can be really tricky to get up here. So we sort of leave that for the people who are finding the VR easy to navigate around. Um, but it allows us to sort of get a, a good sense of the height of these structures um, because you can feel how high you are when you're in the virtual reality component or in the virtual reality experience. So uh, that concludes our sort of virtual tour of the longhouse here. Um, I will be continuing with a short um, activity for you um, in a moment. So I will be seeing you soon. Bye bye. Hi everybody, hope everyone enjoyed the uh, virtual, relong virtual longhouse tour that we just had. Um, and if you remember from last week, if you watched, we made a floor plan of a 
longhouse um because we were talking about the post molds and that's the brown circles that we see here and that's what's left behind in the soil if you remember we have our picture here of the posts sunk down into the soil and this part rots and becomes these little circles when we clear off the top and we look down at a nice flat ground, we can see these little different circles of colored soil in the ground. And the little ones are the thin trunks of trees that are used as posts for the outside, for the frame of the longhouse. The inside posts are a bit bigger and they form the main structure as well as support the platforms, which um, I talked about in the virtual reality longhouse tour. Um, and then we also have our black circles of soil in the center. That's our fire pits full of ash and soot and all sorts of burnt materials. And we have our storage pits or our garbage pits that have showed up there, showing up there. So what we're going to do today is we're going to build up. So what we did at the museum is after we excavated and we um, reported on all of the findings that were there, uh, most of those excavations were done in the 1970s um, and then much later we took the information from the excavations that had been done and we built the longhouse that's on the property now um, and that's kind of what we're going to do now. We're going to take our floor plan of a longhouse that we made before and we're going to build up. Um, now you can do this big in the way that I'm going to show you. You can also Use a toilet paper roll, cut out the sides, and you'll get um, a small little longhouse. Uh, if you want to make a village, perhaps, you can use a few of these. I know everybody has these on hand, right? So you can make some, some small longhouses for perhaps multiples. Um, the Lawson or the village that is on the Lawson site had between 30 and 40 different longhouses, so they would be all together surrounded by a big palisade. Um, but we're gonna make a single longhouse. So I have a whole bunch of materials here and you can use whatever you like, whatever you have on hand. Um, we do this at the museum when we're open with school groups and we give them a bunch of stuff. And the challenge is to build with what you have. So when people were building here in London, Southwestern Ontario, the Medway Valley, um, where the village that is on the Lawson site is located, they couldn't order things in from anywhere. They had what was available to them. And that's pretty much been the, how people build and have materials for most of human history. Um, we have a little bit more availability today to get things from far away, but we still mostly use things that are in our own backyard if possible, right? So. What I'm going to do is I have some pipe cleaners that I have left over from our snake craft last week and I'm going to use these as the posts because these will do that for me. And there are two ways to do this. One is to poke through the paper. I've done this on this thick paper so I'm not going to do that. I'm going to use my trusty glue gun here. Um, because that will go much faster for us. So I put some glue there and we're gonna hold it. I'm gonna put glue on the next one. Ooh. We're gonna let these sort of um, get stuck. Like so. They do actually work a little bit better with a few poke holes and put them through it. But I really, can't do it with the materials that I have for myself here. And that's okay. We make do with what we have. We make work the materials that we have. And I'm just going to do some of this. I'm not going to do the whole thing. Um, but I will let those ones dry. I'm going to do a smaller one. Well, I'll cut it wet. I'll cut it after. Whoop. So let these dry. Now, unfortunately, white glue doesn't dry very well. 
um, not for pipe cleaners. So if you do only have sort of the white um, uh, school glue, I would suggest poking holes. Um, you can do this with uh, popsicle sticks. You could do this with um, pieces of paper. You can do this with all sorts of different things. And I'm gonna hold that in place. The challenge we set the students when we ask them to do this is a bit of an engineering challenge. How are you going to create what it is you want to create? I'm gonna back up a little so we can see it better. There we go. What is What it is you wanna create with the materials that you have? And sometimes that works out really well. And the students have some fantastic, fantastic little longhouses. And other times their plan doesn't really work out as much. But both are fantastic because they're exploring different ideas, different ways of making things work. And that's what's important. Now, one thing I haven't talked about, which I'll talk about as I'm building here, um, is how people made the longhouses with the arch. So how do we get that arch in the wood? Um, they would actually did it with either young trees, so that's the, the very young green trees. Use them right away when they're fresh they're bendy. Uh, if you've ever seen trees blowing in the wind and they bend, trees that are living are bendy. Um, if they're, the thinner they are, the bendier they are. Um, but uh, thin young trees are bendy. So um, if you use them right away, put them into the soil and then bend them across and tie them at the top, then you'll get Some, um, some bendy trees. Uh, if the trees aren't quite bendy anymore, what people could do, and probably did do, is put them into the water, put them into the creek or the river that's nearby, and let them get waterlogged so they would be full of water. And when they're full of water, it kind of mimics when they're young, and it makes them bendy too. So that's two ways that you can make these, these bendy curving structures is by bending, bending the wood. All right, and this one here, whoop, I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller because it's gonna be the front entrance, so let's see. Let's cut that a little smaller. So that's one way. All right, now the idea with this is to put as many details as you can. If you want to do some research further on longhouses, you can check out our website um, or you can check out other sources. Um, I can maybe put up a list of some suggested sources on our website too. Ah, the only problem with glue guns is all of the glue gun strings. All right, now that I'm not gonna go the whole way that way because we don't wanna take too, too long, um, but I'm gonna use another pipe cleaner here to get this structure. And I'm gonna do it this way because it's a little bit faster. Um, although they, people wouldn't, we're doing this in our own way. This is our own engineering. Um, we're going to try to mimic, in some ways, the traditional methods of building. And in other ways, we want to solve our mechanical engineering problems here, or our structural engineering problems. But if you watched the video a few minutes ago, um, here we are. Ooh. There's a loud noise here. I don't know what that was. Okay. Here we are. So there's my structure. It's starting out. It's a little wonky. 
but I don't think they're going to be perfect. There we are. They're just a little, there we are. That's a bit better. This one maybe needs to be a bit shorter. We can, that's the nice thing with pipe cleaners is you can make them a little longer, or a little shorter just by bending them. There we are. It's a lot like the longhouse at the museum. It's a little bit like this too. Alrighty. So we have our structure and by leaving it open, we can actually build some stuff inside too. So I've got some beads and I'm going to put some beads. I'm going to use these as those stones that go around the outside of the fire pit. Oh, I should have put these on first. Should have, could have, but I didn't. Okay. So these can go all the way around. These might work with, um, you can use any color. They don't all have to be the same color. There we go. Um, so these can go all the way around. You can use some different colors to maybe make some fire. We don't want the fire too big. Just cut some sort of random sort of fire-like looking shapes. I'm gonna put that right in the middle. So we have a fire there and we can use paper to make some pottery. So we can add in as many details as we want. Oops. If you want to add in some people, you can do that too. If you want to add some animals. Um, if you watch the, um, oh, Animal resources, there are the med, the resources of Medway Valley uh, videos that we've been doing. Uh, we've been talking a lot about the animals that are around. Uh, I talked about the snakes last week and the birds the week before. This week on Wednesday, we're going to talk about the amphibians. There's a, a cute little salamander that lives in Medway Creek. So it's a fairly large pot. We're going to put it off to the side. There we go. So there we are. We could also build our bunks. Um, you could do that by putting in those other, I'm gonna maybe do one side of it. Let's try it over this side. Give you guys an idea. Put that there and that's gonna be twice as high as I need it. So let's cut that in half. I'll give you an idea of how to make some bunks, but again, do these however you like and feel free. There we go. Yeah. We could use some string to tie these together. But again, since I'm using these pipe cleaners, um, we'll use the nature of the pipe cleaner in this case. But if you're using something like paper, then paper doesn't have the same nature as the pipe cleaners, it doesn't bend and hold its shape because it's not wire. So in those cases, you might want to use some string. If you're using popsicle sticks, you might want to use some string. Um, all right, and let's turn this this way and we're gonna put, whoop, another, actually I'm gonna go all the way around. Oops. I'm just going to do one platform, but again, if you want to make it as much like possible, they generally have as much like a real longhouse as possible. They generally have two, two platforms. I'm just going to use that Maybe a little bit faster here for us. Oop. And remember, if you are using the glue guns, they are hot. Um, let's go through this one. I think that will work better. It'll also help form our structure. Ah, okay. Let's glue all that together. Um, and glue guns um, do come in two different types. They come in 
high heat and low heat. Um, don't use the high heat ones, which are more for sort of more industrial purposes. Um, don't use them with kids because they are very hot. These low heat ones, they, they'll sting if they get the, the glue on their fingers, but it won't burn them. Um, or at least not enough to last. Um, okay, and I will just cut a piece of the brown paper here to fit. And stick that on for my platform. I would cut it a little bit more carefully if it was. There we are. But I want to show you how it works. Um, let's pop that up through. There we are. So that's some of the pieces of my longhouse. I've got some walls. There we are. I've got the posts that go up and above, up and over, form the arches. I've got the inside posts. I've got glue on my finger. There we are. Um, I've got the platform and I've got a fire. I've got some stones around the fire. We have a pot. And we can continue until we have the entire thing. So um, at that point, if you want to, you can leave it open or you can use some paper to cover it. Um, I'm not going to do that today. I'm going to leave it open so we can see all the details. So that is our longhouse building. So if you um, make a longhouse and you want to share it with us, please do. Um, I look forward to seeing them. You can send them to our Facebook page directly. You can upload them at this video or you can also share them on social media with our MOA Kids Activities Hashtag. So hashtag MOA Kids Activities. All right. Thank you very much. And I will see you on Wednesday.